A lot of people preemptively front run the altcoin season. Getting exposure into altcoins too soon could be absolutely detrimental to your portfolio. So on today's show, we're going to have a look at when is the right time to get maximum exposure to altcoins. We're also going to have a look at which altcoins have been performing the best, not only against their USD pairs, but also against Bitcoin. Um, and we're just going to look at the facts and the data. We'll do a quick overview of Bitcoin as well. So without further ado, let's get straight into the show. And we'll start off over here with the banter bubbles chart, just getting an overview of how things have looked over the course of, uh, let's say, the last year in the top 100. This will give you a little bit of a hint and a clue as to what's to come. Before we get into everything detail oriented here, smash the like button, hit the bell notification, subscribe to the channel, and then also vote in the poll section over here. Um, let me know which sector will perform the best against Bitcoin. Do you think it's layer ones, real world assets, AI, or is it going to be meme? coins while you smash the like button uh, quickly cast your vote over there always like to gauge the sentiment of the viewers on the show well when you put on the yearly chart over here there's no surprise which coins are standing out the most against bitcoin over the last year uh, it's going to be the meme coin sector right at least according to this if we look at the monthly gains in the top 100 coins uh, then you have a couple of other more fundamentally sound uh, coins that have a case for longevity which are still holding up ena uh, we have ton we have core over there. And then, of course, we do still have whiff. If you look at the weekly, again, same thing, right? Some fundamentally sound coins over there. The daily, mostly red at the moment. And this is against their USD pairs, right? What happens when you transition this against Bitcoin? Uh, you can go through on banter bubbles over here, change the settings, change the currency, and you can look at against various different currencies. So let's view what these charts look like against Bitcoin. And now, again, same thing. The outliers remain those uh, meme coins over there. Uh, still the same one strong over there on the weekly. Uh, you have uh, Audi, ENA, Neo, Ton, CKB, Theta. So most of the coins on the weekly looking red against Bitcoin. What about the daily red against Bitcoin on the hourly? Most of them in the top 100 are also red against Bitcoin. So we're going to get into a bit more detail. We're going to have a look at the various different sectors within crypto. For example, we're going to look at layer ones, layer twos, AI. We're going to look at uh, other fundamental coins. We're going to look at the meme coins. And then we're going to decipher where are the best places to be putting your money uh, in the coming weeks and months and which trends are up against Bitcoin and which trends are down against Bitcoin. But let's quickly go into where Bitcoin is at uh, within the given cycle, right? We are still in that trading range. We're chopping around and you can expect that trading range will continue for a little bit longer. Uh, ETF inflows yesterday were positive once again, which means today we probably get a little bit of green, a little bit of a bounce. And let's see how the week closes. We're still waiting for multiple weekly candle closes above the key level over here at $69,000, which was the wick high of the prior cycles all-time high. You can see a massive rounded bottom over here, uh, which has mostly been up only with very, very little pullbacks. If we do get a pullback, as long as price holds above $59,000, uh, that is still very, very bullish. Anything below that and the whole picture starts to shift. So that's your very quick high time frame overview. You can see over here on the five-day time frame as well, we are attempting to maintain that bullish trend with price above the short term medium uh, the short and the medium and the high time frame moving average with that short which is above the medium which is above the high time frame that is your bullish posturing so that's your quick analysis quickly looking at the daily time frame over here we now starting to get multiple candles closing uh higher, which means that the RSI and the RSI's moving average, the yellow line, is starting to break that down sloping trend line. You can use trend lines. You can also use chart patterns when it actually comes to looking at, um, at RSI's. It actually is surprisingly accurate. If you ever spot head and shoulders or inverse head and shoulders on the RSI's, it is pretty solid. Look, here's an example. There you go. You have a head and shoulder formation over here on the RSI and that led to the breakdown, right? So pretty reliable. You are breaking the down sloping trend line, showing that there is <clears throat> the potential for a momentum shift. You also have the <clears throat> double formation bottom here on the RSI. And if we go back and we look at what's happening on price, well, currently Bitcoin is attempting to uh, maintain this bullish pendant, right? So the bullish pendant, you got the pole over here falling into a pendant, price trying to break out of the top side right now with 
levels holding above your pivot level. Your pivot level today is coming in at 70,430. You're above the 200 EMA on the one hour and the four hour time frame. And really, we're still waiting for multiple candles to close above this level. That should uh, coincide with multiple closing candles above $69,000 on your weekly time frames. And that should lead to higher prices, right? So, all in all, that's looking good. Let's continue on over here. Very, very quick mention again on the banter bubbles. This is a multiple uh, uh, resourceful tool that you can use in many different ways. You can use it for the newsroom as well, right? If you scroll through, you can get all the research that the researchers are looking at. But the reason that I'm bringing it up right now today is because of the airdrop counter, which is ticking over on the top. So I had to quickly make a very quick update on what's happening with the gummy airdrop, which is due to uh, launch on or the 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 birth date of gummy will be on 420 of course and um leading up to that there's going to be a snapshot it could happen at absolutely any moment which is why you want to continue to run your airdrop counter on bubbles that is a separate airdrop right separate to the other ways remember if you sign up to blowfin and you deposit a hundred dollars this is going to be your highest tier bonus you're going to get a massive bonus by doing that and then there's been a lot of questions around the wallet right so we need to get your wallet in order to give you the airdrop. You can't give an exchange wallet, a Solana exchange wallet, right? Because that's a hot wallet that's held by the exchanges. That means that the airdrop will then go to the exchanges. So you need something like this, a phantom wallet, P-H-A-N-T-O-M, right? Download that wallet. It will give you a 12-word seed phrase. Store that seed phrase. Keep it very, very safe. Once you have that, uh, add the Chrome extension right to the top over here, like I have mine over there uh, on the top right, and ultimately give us that address. So that's all you have to do. That's what we mean by having a decentralized wallet, something that's not on exchange, right? Um, and if you're on Whale Room Discord, while well, you're getting additional bonuses for being there, please guys go look in the announcement section of Whale Room. Uh, I've given a whole form over there of everything you need to fill out uh, to get that that max, the multiplier bonus that's uh, pretty much for the members only, right? Um, moving on, moving on, cool. Now that's out the way, let's continue on over here. You guys know what to do. All links are below if you've never heard of this, um, the gummy airdrop, all links are below to explain it. Let's continue. Looking at Bitcoin over here, we're still waiting for the proper short squeeze, right? It hasn't actually taken place yet. Um, although prices have ground up higher and higher, we haven't seen the proper short squeeze in the sense when you look over here, you have spot which has been buying up, leverage which is still being short selling and open interest which is pretty flat at the moment. So we're waiting for a spike up in open interest. We're waiting for the break of trend with the leverage bias to increase back towards the upside. And then ultimately you can see over here, if you look at the cumulative volume delta, it's pretty flat at the moment. Now I've said it multiple times this week, this is very, very resourceful and useful in a ranging market, which is what we're currently in, in the short time frame for Bitcoin. And consequently, that's what we're watching, right? We're waiting to see big, big spikes from this towards the upside. When it gets heavily skewed and we're reaching those range high resistances around 73,000, we'll be aware of a potential deviation. The plan has remained the same for almost two weeks. We've been watching this pretty much since the lows over here. So since the uh, 20th of March, it's actually about three weeks. We said once you swept the lows here, you're looking next to sweep the highs that plan remains in motion you just have to exercise a little bit of patience okay so that's it uh, we're still waiting maybe over the course of this weekend we'll get that sweep looking at the stock market and then we'll start to move into the altcoin sector right stock markets all holding up top left s p 500 continues to range nasdaq continues to range dow jones also holding up only just only just holding up over there still continuing to range it has broken the high time frame uptrend. Uh, when you look at things like the S&P 500 and you look at that long-term trend over here that we've had, I mean, if you wanted to put in a very aggressive and tight trend line towards the upside, of course, you can see over there, it's recently just started to break that, right? But that's not a death sentence for the market. It just means a consolidative period. The majority of market participants have probably missed out since the major lows which occurred last year in October, and they're all waiting for an enormous dip to get back into the market. You probably do get dips, but they're probably not going to be as deep as what the rest of the market is looking for. So keep that in the back of your mind. Uh, you can see Coinbase following along with the stock markets over here. Also in a perfect ranging market, here's your range low at 220. Here's your range high at 284. 
that creates a strong base of support and propels prices higher once the consolidation period is over. Where are altcoins within the cycle? If you look at Yoda, um, he has their tweet. Alts are currently sitting uh, on the Wall Street psychology cheat sheet somewhere between that hope and optimism phase, right? Remember, we want to be buyers of capitulation and extreme fear or depression within the market. And we want to be sellers when there's euphoria. Euphoria comes after optimism, right? So we're somewhere between hope and optimism. Um, and I would argue that uh, against the BTC pairs, we probably still in the fear phase, right? I'll show you why, I'll show you why. Maybe even the depression phase for some of them, they look terrible. Uh, just a spoiler alert, some of them look terrible. I'm gonna give you the ones that look good on today's show though. Okay, as soon as they start popping again, we'll see sentiment shift towards belief and thrill. Uh, be ready for the ride. So that's the picture. That's what total three looks like. We're expecting pretty much bull flag after bull flag. This is typically the way the bull runs work, right? That's why everyone's a genius in a bull run because it's very hard to mess up. Um, even if you buy the top, you just wait a couple of days and then there'll be a new top. And that's kind of the environment that we're in. There's total three. It looks exactly the same. So we're in that ranging market right now. That's what I mean. If you bought the top over here at 700, $181 billion, you're probably just going to wait a couple of days or weeks and ultimately there will be a new high and you will look like a genius just like everybody else in a bull run. So some of the coins that we've called over the last week or so, I uh, wanted to just give brief mention to ZK Hive uh, because once it was pushing up over here, we said watch for the range to form. This would give you an opportunity to potentially get in at the next major level of support, which is where we're currently at. So anywhere between, if it depends if it holds this at 28 cents, would would be an area of interest. Now, this is the Telegram bot. Uh, there we go. So this would be an area of interest. If we can hold this and, and defend that range level, you're looking at a move back to 42. It's a pretty low market cap uh, with sub 30 million. Remember, the lower the market cap, technically speaking, the higher the risk, but also the higher the reward, right? Uh, it takes only a little bit of money to come into the market to get this to 60, then to 100 million. And that sends prices ripping higher very, very quickly. Overall, this is an uptrend. You're moving through the ebbs and flows with higher highs and higher lows. So keep an eye out on this. If you go and look at ZK Hive, they're announcing their ZK nodes, which will be the first ever decentralized antivirus network run by the community and provisioned by them. So go through, look at their tweet, check them out. Um, again, they are on Telegram. They help you to uh, vet uh, uh, projects and to spot if there's gonna be some sort of an exploit. Speaking of exploits, right? Before we get into those altcoins, uh, there's been a development in this case, right? If you look over here from Coindesk, they just released an article, the SEC's apparent case against Uniswap, which recently just came out uh, as of pretty much the day before yesterday. They say it's likely the opening move in a massive, massive war against DeFi. So you can go into that post over here. Um, this is opening up Pandora's box, right? Uh, you guys need to be super, super careful out there uh, with regards to whatever you're doing DeFi fire related, try and keep things as private as possible. Uh, the best way to do that, I hope I don't go to jail for saying this, honestly, but the best way, I think, I think we're safe in South Africa. I'm not under the US scrutiny yet. I think the best way to do this is to have a non-KYC exchange. Let me just cover myself here. This is not financial advice. I'm just a person with an opinion on the internet and I have a very low IQ. I don't know what I'm talking about SEC, but I think the best thing to do over here is probably to, to uh, have a non-KYC exchange uh, for example, like Blofin, you could use them. That's one example. Uh, and then ultimately, when you are playing around with DeFi, you wanna move from the non-KYC exchange onto those uh, MetaMask wallets. And that's the only uh, in and out avenue, right? So you don't ever wanna make any transactions from that MetaMask or Phantom wallet, the decentralized wallets, and make any swaps that are related to something that you have KYC. So that's probably the best way to do that. Uh, and secondly, you obviously wanna protect your IP. It's not the time to be messing around when this whole Pandora's box opens up. We mentioned it yesterday. Uh, now we have about 24 hours left before they probably start subpoenaing them for all of the different IP addresses and pulling that whole database uh, for anybody that has uni used Uniswap that's in a jurisdiction that's not allowed to, for example, like the US, unfortunately for our US friends, right? Also many parts of Europe we know are similar. The UK is probably exactly the same boat. Please guys, 
look, I'm not shilling, I'm not shilling this. Use any VPN you want. We do have a partnership with them and it's a double benefit. Um, ultimately, they sponsor the show because you guys sign up. And if you sign up, because they sponsor the show, you're getting 67% off, which works out to literally nine cents a day. Protect your IP even when you run through a non-KYC exchange. So non-KYC exchange, send it to the MetaMask, send it to the Phantom. When you're using that MetaMask and Phantom, have the VPN turned on. Remember, you can select any country in the world that you wanna be in. So you can choose the absolute most crypto-friendly country in the world on NordVPN and select that and it will issue you an IP address from that said country, right? Like Malta or um, whatever, right? Wherever in the world, if you wanna be in uh, uh, Maldives, if you wanna be in uh, Bahamas, choose wherever the location is that you think is most crypto friendly, select that, put it on and utilize that. And then also take advantage of Incogni, all the links are below. They'll remove all of your data uh, from those databases and call centers and things like that. Links are below. Okay, let's continue. Let's continue on over here. Now let's get into the real alpha of the show, which is of course the altcoin sector. I have a whole lot that I want to speak about over here. Um, uh, not just meme coins, real world assets, AI. We got a whole lot that we're going to cover. Please guys, smash the like button. Truly, truly helps to get that show content out there. So before we give all those calls, smash the like button. Let's get it to 1,500 likes during the live session. And then also, if you uh, enjoy this video and you're somebody that's watched it after the live session, uh, also smash the like button if you like this format of us building altcoin portfolios and going through all those altcoins against BTC, identifying which ones are strong. And then at the same time, let me know in the comment section, not in the live, but afterwards, let me know in the comment section, uh, what do you wanna see more of in the shows? What do you wanna cover more of? Do you wanna cover more meme coins, altcoins, uh, longer term plays, medium time frame plays? Do you want short term trades? like sculpts what exactly do you want trying to understand you guys the best that i can because there's a lot of new uh, market participants which have joined recently in light of the bull run so firstly we know we know this we're gonna we're gonna review the facts and the data we're gonna review the evidence but as tom says over here meme coins outperformed every sector by 10x in q1 uh of uh, well, this year right and we saw that if you look over here on the yearly chart bonk pepe woof the absolute three biggest bubbles on a yearly chart, uh, smashing those gains, absolutely enormous gains over there. Um, and I think that's measured against BTC, right? So if you go against USD, uh, the gains look even bigger, even bigger gains, right? Look at those gains now, worth 72,000%, Pepe uh, 3,600, Bong 3,300. I still have my whiff long open, by the way. The leverage long is still open. So I know that a lot of people are overhearing about meme coins. It's not the the basis of the show. We're just gonna cover a little bit on that. We're covering other things as well. But guys, do you not think that I have a responsibility to have nailed this meme coin uh, cycle the way that we have when this is the chart, right? Imagine I never spoke about meme coins and this was evident. What kind of a analyst and YouTuber would I have been not to identify and bring that to you guys, the community, right? This is why we've done so well. Of course, I can only bring you the information. I can only tell you what I'm doing. I can't force you to uh, execute on those trades, right? If you did execute on those trades, you should be up massively. In Whale Room, we did between 100 and over a thousand X returns. These are anomalies, unheard of gains on multiple different meme coins, right? Literally multiple meme coins did, uh, two of them did over 100X and one of them did over 1000X that we gave, right? Yes, we took probably about 50 different meme coins, but do you think we're crying about that? The fact that uh, three of them made it and the others not so much, some of them went to zero, some of them kind of only did two or three X. At the end of the day, we made absolute gang cash and will the trend continue? That's a question. And when is altcoin season? That's the other question, right? If you look over here, we're still very much in Bitcoin season. Left-hand side is Bitcoin season. You can use this chart as it oscillates between the bottom and the top over here. Um, really, you can see that Bitcoin season is uh, when this is trending below that line, Bitcoin is completely outperforming. Now we're in that choppy environment and full-blown altcoin season will be when uh, 75 of the top 100 coins, uh, or excuse me, let's just read this again. So go to the bottom over here, when 75%, excuse me, of the top 50 coins on coin market cap 
are performing better than Bitcoin for three months in a row. So 90 days, that's where they consider it altcoin season. Now, of course, this is a progression to get there. And I probably don't really want my followers to uh, be entering when we're fully at the, at the top over there. But I also don't want you to be holding altcoins that are going to be bleeding out against Bitcoin, meaning you're losing a, a huge amount of money. We want to transition at just the right time. So if we go through to look at a bunch of these charts, I thought that the simplest and easiest way to not have this absolutely drawn out show on coins versus BTC, the easiest way would be to just simply put on Bitcoin on the daily time frame uh, using uh, Renko. Renko is the most simple charting technique you can ever use. It's a Japanese technique uh, and ultimately uh, Japanese candlesticks. All you need to do is put it on Renko. You'd have to have a premium version to do that. So there it is. We're on Renko. And simply when it's green on the daily, you're in uh, to upswing. Uh, there you go. You've got a trending move over there. Let's just see if my mouse, did my mouse just break? It's not working anymore. Okay, it's fine. I'll use the mouse pad. Um, there you go. You got it swinging towards the upside. When it's red, we're starting to go risk off. We haven't got the close over here, so don't panic on Bitcoin, but there is a potential for a local top, of course, as always. Now let's go through all the different various pairs. So how has Ethereum performed against Bitcoin? Remember, if it's green and trending up, it's good. And if it's red, it's bad. Now this will give you a little bit of a reality check of what's going on in the market. Okay, there we have it. I thought that wasn't going to work. So there you have ETH BTC, the ETH BTC chart. We've covered it a whole lot. You can see creating new swing lows, Renko's red. It's not looking good, right? It's not looking good for ETH. We need to see a lot more to prove if this is reaccumulation. Otherwise, this could very be distribution. You can imagine if you start to close new swing lows on the Renko chart uh, below the 0 0.050 level and the Renko chart remains red, you could easily capitulate on ETH BTC going much, much lower. Let's look at Link BTC which did hold up for a short amount of time, but that's all that it was, right? It was a short amount of time earlier on this year. It was starting to establish an uptrend and look at that link BTC breaking down uh, to the bottom. What about our beloved XRP? That, that is sarcasm, by the way. It's not our beloved XRP. Pretty much at ultimate cycle lows. The last time was in January of 2021. And then again in March of 2021, pretty much at ultimate lows. This is, I know this is creating a very, very fine line. If you're on a mobile device, you may need to pause or zoom in. But if I kind of uh, compress the chart over here, it's never looked worse for XRP. That was the ultimate top the peak in 2018 January, and this has been the XRP chart against Bitcoin. Uh, there could be nothing worse to hold, literally. This has been terrible. Do you remember when Litecoin was called silver to Bitcoin being the gold? Uh, this is what the, that chart looks like, right? Litecoin against BTC, new lows. Swing lows, getting absolutely obliterated over there. I would not want to be holding any Litecoin. Let's go into some of the layer ones. Now, I don't have every single one because some of them don't have enough chart history to chart against Bitcoin. So just bear with me over here. Uh, but there you have Aptos is consolidating at new lows, right? So this doesn't mean that it'll never go up. Something like Aptos is relatively new in terms of uh, the cycle. There is a possibility that this will start to create some sort of a reaccumulation range over here. And then as it starts to establish an uptrend, you can jump on, on the next high low. But for now, that doesn't have a high low. So it is getting obliterated. Let's look at cake. Okay, uh, there's cake also obliterated. And you'll see in each sector that we're looking at, there's really only about one coin that's been doing well. Um, let me know in the comments if you can guess which coin it's going to be for the layer ones. There's only one. There's only one coin that's done well out of these coins over here against Bitcoin. Which one is it? Let me know in the comments over there. Um, and then let's continue. So Cake, not doing too great. Zeta, also getting obliterated straight down. AVAX, there you go. AVAX was possibly trying to attempt a bit of a reaccumulation range. Uh, you had a big push up over here, breaking the last lower high. So there is a little bit of a break of structure over there. Is this going to be a high low? That's a question. If so, uh, possibly, possibly uh, AVAX could be the next one to move. We did speak about the possibility of that not too long ago. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe you'll start to see something like that where AVAX does start to increase. Uh, once it breaks above here at 0 0.011998, we'll know for sure. Okay, I can see your guys' guesses. You 
guessing Solana, Phantom, BNB, Sui. Um, some of you are right. Some of you are right. Some of you are wrong, right? So we'll get into it now. Um, there's only one. There's only one in the layer ones that has performed. There's Dot getting absolutely smashed. There is Say <clears throat> also getting smashed. Initially, it was straight up, right? When it was brand new and pumping. Uh, there you go from November all the way up to January. And then pretty much it started to distribute. And now it's been getting smashed. And this is the importance, right, guys? It's super, super important. If you want to do well in this space, you really have to measure your uh, holdings against Bitcoin, right? Go and check. Make sure that, you, that your coins are outperforming Bitcoin. Otherwise, they are losing you money. You want to cut those positions. He has Phantom, right? Getting obliterated. Yes, we had a recent move up over here, but at the end of the day, this is theoretically still yet another low high. There you have it, yet another low high. So now the question is, do we come in to create a new swing low for Phantom? If not, and you start to create a higher high, then yes, this may be a reaccumulation range. Remember, markets move in different phases, right? They go into trends, whether it's trends to the downside or the upside, following that trend becomes a range, right? So very unneat drawing because my, my mouse is doing funny stuff, but you guys get the point. Let's go into Injective. Injective did phenomenally well as well. In the beginning over here, outperforming Bitcoin from uh, February of 2023 all the way up literally for an entire year and then has started to bleed out. Look at that. Lower lows, lower highs, completely bleeding out. And then we have, of course, Solana. So Solana is the coin. That was the one a lot of you guessed it. So well done. Solana has been putting in, of course, since the lows over here, January this year. Maybe Solana will, would have performed this year the way Injective did, right? Injective perform, outperforming Bitcoin from January 2023 all the way till the end, maybe Solana from January 2024 uh, will outperform Bitcoin, creating higher highs and high lows. He has Cardano, obliterated, right? Smacked all the way back down to new lows. It hasn't been worse for Cardano versus Bitcoin. What about Nia? So Nia putting in a big, big move over here. This is the question. Will this trend continue? You need to gauge it on the lower timeframes against Bitcoin. Is it high highs and high lows? We know that it's part of the AI narrative, which caught a major, major bid. Will this continue? That's a question. Uh, pay attention, but the macro trend is still down. There's Matic obliterated. Look at that Matic chart over there getting absolutely smacked. Uh, straight distribution from the top over there coming all the way down. Uh, there's no reason to sell your Bitcoin for something like Matic yet. And I apologize if I'm uh, shocking any of you out here, but it's better to get a reality check than continue making the same bad mistakes over and over. Rather take the new income and put it into something that looks strong. There's Atom, smashed, Sui. Let's go to Sui. Also, Sui kind of new, right? So uh, say we know it was going up while Sui was going down over here. Maybe there's a rotational shift that's moving from say into Sui. Uh, we'll pay attention to this one. It's a little bit too soon to tell. Casper, uh, also very, very uh, young chart. So kind of hard to chart against against uh, um, Bitcoin on the daily time frame using Renko. You'll have to look on the lower time frames. Um, it's at, I can tell you it's in an accumulation range at the range low. So it's a question of whether it will continue continue to hold that range low. Let's look at the layer twos. Okay, obliterated on Metis. Okay, optimism versus Bitcoin. Also getting smacked, but it is theoretically coming into the range low. Maybe, maybe, maybe if ETH starts to bounce against Bitcoin, uh, then the layer twos will also start to move with optimism being one of the ETH layer twos. Uh, Arbitrum, new swing lows, straight downtrend over there, getting absolutely smacked. Stacks, yeah, we have Stacks as one of the coins that's been holding up because it's a higher beta play against Bitcoin. If Bitcoin goes down, Stacks goes down harder. If Bitcoin goes up, Stacks goes up further than what Bitcoin would and also against Bitcoin. So it's a really good one. If you want that altcoin exposure, play Stacks. If you think Bitcoin's going to keep going up, buy Stacks, right? That's an opportunity. Okay, real world assets. Let's have a look over here. So OM, there's OM trying to put in a double bottom over here. It is breaking structure with a higher high. So the trend has shifted towards the upside ever since BlackRock got involved with their real world asset fund, right? So this is starting to look uh, relatively decent. What about Dusk? I don't have all the real world assets. Unfortunately, you can't chart all of them against Bitcoin. Also, uh, slowing down from the downtrend, starting to create a reaccumulation range. This is why we said real world, world assets are some of the ones that you want to be looking at. Um, okay, 
Boson still getting smashed. This one's got a bit of work to do. Let's go on to the DEXs. How are the DEXs looking? Okay. Also, getting obliterated over here, one inch, straight downtrend. Uh, looked like it could be reaccumulation, but now it's starting to look more like distribution, uh, creating new swing lows on a closing basis, uh, which is bad. GMX, hammered, right? Remember the hype around GMX uh, last year, for those of you who have been around for a while? Look at that chart, terrible. Would you want to be holding this? Oh my word, terrible, terrible. DYDX, okay. Also, probably near range low over here. Let's just see if it can break back into the range. So the same applies over here um, in accordance with the other trading ranges that we look at. If that's the range level over there and you get some sort of a swing failure deviation back into the range, uh, then that would become a buying opportunity. But until, it current, until then, it currently um, is just in a straight downtrend. Lower lows, lower highs, straight distribution, getting absolutely hammered. Uniswap. Also, we know recently, of course, this is the whole case, which is why you want to protect your IP. Uh, this is uh, the SEC meddling with Uniswap, and consequently, it's come all the way back down. It was attempting to break out with higher highs and higher lows, and pretty much now we got that moved down because of the recent uh, filings by the SEC. Okay, uh, Sushi. Uh, looks like it's, it, it, it could be, it's arguable, right? We have to wait to see. This could be reaccumulation. If you start to create new closing candles down here, that's going to be distribution and you'll be looking at lower prices. Whichever way you slice it, it doesn't really matter. I wouldn't really be buying sushi over here. I would honestly just wait for a strong new trend to establish and rather just, um, you don't even, you don't have to buy it here. Uh, you can wait to see. Maybe, maybe you get in somewhere here when you start to see uh, new momentum and liquidity coming into the market and a potential powerful uptrend forming. Okay, let's go on to AI, XAI, <clears throat> getting hammered, right? XAI getting hammered against Bitcoin over there. Uh, Ocean, so some of these haven't done too bad. We'll get into the, the good ones now, but this is what I'm showing you guys, right? This is the point. This is why you don't blindly want to just buy any old alt altcoin that's out there because of hype around it. Uh, you actually need to look at the charts if you are holding for long-term, right? Short-term trades doesn't matter, right? This is what I always say, right? Short-term trades don't matter, but investments matter. Why? Because if you're taking a short-term trade, you're risking a certain amount to gain a certain amount. Typically, most people are looking at a one to three risk to reward ratio. Like uh, for every one that you risk, you should be getting rewarded three. And if you know your probabilities and you know your hit rate and you know that you win 70% of the time, then this is a mathematical certainty that over time you're going to make money. But the only way you'll know that is if you've back tested thousands of trades and you have a trading strategy and system that suggests that you're going to win even 60% of the time. If you win 60% of the time and your trade plays out on a three to one risk to reward ratio, you're always going to make money, right? So when you're trading altcoins, you don't need to look at the BTC pair if you're taking a short-term trade like this, because you're only looking for the R. You're either gonna lose one R or you're gonna gain a certain amount of R rewards, right? And that's it. But if, you, if you're buying to hold for a cyclical um, game plan where you want to hold for the duration of the bull run, it's really worth get it, looking at something like this. Because let's say, for example, you wanted to buy Ocean and you looked at this chart and you said, hey, I want to buy Ocean. Let's just get rid of that. And you said to yourself, you know, hey, I want to buy Ocean, let's say over here. You wanted to buy Ocean over here. Price went up. Fair enough. You're like, cool, my idea's right. But then it started to close below, creating a new swing low. You could have said, well, you know what? It's fine. I'll just add more and I'll just add more, and I'll just add more. And look at what happened, right? Uh, ultimately, without looking, because you didn't want to look at the chart, you lost 65% against Bitcoin. So you could have just left that in Bitcoin, rode Bitcoin up, and then converted when eventually this starts to break structure, creating a higher high and higher low, and then starts to establish a new trend. You would have made yourself a whole lot more money. Okay, let's continue. Fetch. Okay, Fetch putting in a big rally over here. So uh, this one flipped green down here against Bitcoin at 0 0.0001996. Uh, and ultimately, since then, since that candle, it's put in 158% against Bitcoin. So that's one of the stronger looking ones. AGIX, also looking pretty strong. Macro high low in place on the right hand side over here. Let's see if it can continue on up to create a new swing high. Okay, GRT. 
um, has been selling off. GRT has been selling off. So started to do well over there. Um, give this one a little bit of time. You haven't had Renko close yet, so it's not the end of the world. Now look at the meme coins. Complete outlier, up only. Meme coins have been absolutely ripping to the upside. Um, and this is this is how you can, right? This is the facts and the data. It's not my opinion. This is not some hype channel, moon boy channel. Uh, literally just looking at the facts and the data. This is telling you Pepe has ripped against Bitcoin and it's still at swing highs, right? Meaning it's probably gonna go again. At some point, it's gonna go for another leg. This has been the best bet. Bonk, and unfortunately, I can only trade the older ones with enough price history. Things like Whiff, um, I can't look at, right? I don't have Whiff on here. Okay, I do have Whiff. I don't have things like Win and Marga and um, uh, all these other ones, right? All these other ones that we have been playing along the way. But if you look over here, bonk straight uptrend, getting a little bit sketchy over here, breaking the trend down. Let's see if it's gonna create in, uh, or if it's gonna create a new low over here. If it does, that could be a break of structure. Watch for the lower high. Um, bonk then might get outperformed by Bitcoin. If you look at Floki, absolutely ripping pretty much let's just say you bought over there uh, once you had the first candle that printed, uh, that would be, what is that? 2000% up against Bitcoin. Huge. Dogecoin. There you go. This one's got a lot of history over here. Dogecoin hasn't done too much yet. This has mostly been in a strong downtrend, lower lows and lower highs. It had a bit of a run over here um, in June all the way up to November. But we do expect that coming up to 420, maybe it's going to get a little bit of a push higher over here uh, because everyone just suspects that Elon is going to say something and that gets priced in. If you look at Shiba Inu, one of the older coins, uh, also had a run with the rest of them, but is now starting to distribute. Woof. Against Bitcoin, of course, top performer, right? Absolutely ripping uh, straight up candle after up candle. It's been very, very strong. If we're going to gaming and metaverse, this is what we're seeing over here. Mana or Decentraland, long forgotten, getting absolutely killed. Sandbox against BTC, getting absolutely killed. Alluvium against BTC, getting absolutely slaughtered over here. Super had a run, right? One of the more decent ones, yes, this could be a buying opportunity. Theoretically, against Bitcoin, this could be a buying opportunity. You have higher highs, higher low, higher high. This could be the next high low. Watch to see if this trend will continue towards the upside. Okay, PYR, Vulcan Forge, getting slaughtered against Bitcoin. Gala, getting slaughtered against Bitcoin. Ape, getting absolutely obliterated against Bitcoin. So again, remember risk to reward, if you're trading a simple short-term trade or medium time frame trade, and you're looking at the risk to reward tool to earn yourself USDT, fair enough. But if you're trying to win over more and more Bitcoin, uh, you need to be looking at these charts, right? You're not gonna make Bitcoin if you're trading it into a downtrend. So that gives you a massive amount of different coins, a lot to think about, right? This is just to pique your interest. It's up to you to go out there and to chart the different coins that you're looking at against Bitcoin. Um, that's just some food for thought. We can get into some of the other coins. Solana, of course, like so we can look at the strong ones now. Solana being one of the stronger ones. Therefore, this would be a buying opportunity, probably around about here in this area. You're looking at this to hold as the range low, and then you're looking for a decent move up, right? So from bottom of the range low, let's say you get in over there, that's about a 23% move to the upside. And you never know, maybe on the third attempt at this high. So you got one, you got two. Uh, sometimes the third attempt does break it and you hold that above that level. Then you can look at continuation higher. Um, upside targets for Solana. I don't like doing these upside target things, but if I had to guess, I think at least four to six hundred dollars on the cards for Solana within this uh, cycle. So we'll go through some of those. Make sure you drop your requests. I just want to finish with the rest of the content that I had planned for you guys um, and then we can go into the rest of those uh, requests. Guys, please do me the favor, smash the like button. We want to see if we can get it to a thousand five hundred likes. During the live session we had 900. So smash the like button for the rest of you that haven't um, and then let's continue. Let's continue over here. Okay, so there's a lot going on over here. This is pretty interesting. 2024's most epic underdog story award goes to Pepe Coins, right? Pepe has done super well, but it's the fake Pepe. The fake Pepe is the one that's done super well. We've touched on this briefly in the past, right? So fake Pepe steals the identity of the real Pepe. The devs grind. They announce a layer one for ZKLLMs. 
market cap hits $1 billion, coin gecko fades, coin market cap fades, there's an epic burn about to commence, way too much insanely positive alpha to, discuss, uh, alpha to discuss in one tweet. Imagine the pump when the crypto sphere wakes up to the real Pepe. So we'll get into what is the real Pepe. There's a trade opportunity for you guys here, right? If the rest of the market catches on to what the real Pepe is, uh, this thing, you know, these meme coins go, historically we've seen uh, close to, you know, well, it's tens of billions, tens of billions dollar market cap. This fake Pepe is still under a billion dollar market cap and nobody even really knows about it. So if you click on the link, it's gonna look like I'm about to be hacked, but don't worry, I've got my NordVPN on, so I'm not. Uh, we'll wait for that to load up. We'll wait for that to load up. Let's continue. Um, this site is crazy, guys. This site is crazy. Go through to that tweet. Uh, let's quickly go to the tweet over here. Not that one, this one over here. Where did, I, where did it go now? There we go. Go through to this tweet over here. It's uh, pepecoin.io. Here's pepecoin.io. Look, it looks crazy, right? It says click any key to enter. So there we go. Let's click a key. Okay, we're gonna enter as a guest. Doesn't this bring back memories, right? Back to the old days. How crazy is this? This is the real Pepe, guys. And it's of course linked to based AI, which is one of the other things that we bullish on. So you wanna go play some games? Feel free, go play some games. You can go play Meme Sweeper, Frogger. I mean, this is absolutely nuts, guys. We'll, we'll touch more on this in the future, but uh, one of the guys, big shout out to Carl Chassé, who definitely nailed it very, very early. He's been onto this narrative uh, since the beginning, and he's talking about the peppening, right? The peppening is happening every day. The gap closes until the inevitable where folks will jump from a sinking ship, that being the pepe that most of you have known and come to trade, uh, and they'll move on to the real OG pepe deserving of its place in the world. How many more times must he post this, he says. So at, at under a, a, a billion dollar market cap, you have the other one, which is sitting at much higher market cap, around $3 billion. Um, and here it is, right? So we can go to it. This is the coin, 931 million. Look at that beautiful chart. I mean, that is absolutely exquisite. Let's go on the daily time frame. So there's the contract address. It ends in 489A. The beginning is 0XA9E. Now, this was created many, 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 many years ago, many years before the fake Pepe. But we got to give props to uh, the, the guys for the fake Pepe. Uh, they pulled something quite incredible, right, to get that thing to exchange listings and $3 billion market cap, and it's not even the real one. But eventually, they'll catch on to the tech and what's going on, right? So uh, they're interrelated. We'll touch more on that at later stage in terms of uh, Pepe coin and based AI. Here we got based AI on the bottom. This is a beautiful uptrend, absolutely fantastic. Probably gonna start to create a new accumulation range. You'll be probably lucky if you even get it, uh, if it sweeps down there one more time. Uh, it looks more to me like you're gonna get a more shallow sweep down to about $5, and then it's probably just gonna rip straight towards the upside. So let's look at based AI at $384,000 market cap. Also similar to the real Pepe uh, holding within that range. We said that was the opportunity, right? We would have really liked to get it down here at $5.40, trading at uh, a very, very similar, a little bit more of a premium than what the Pepe coin is. Um, but there you go, it's forming its range over here. We're looking for this to also break out uh, to higher prices at a later stage. So. The meme coin rally continues. You have virtual bacon as well showing over here. Gonna be a huge month for the different meme coins trending in the ecosystem. Look out for these meme coins, right? Today, Foxy is launching, right? Launching on linear for MetaMask users. It looks just like the MetaMask Fox. Uh, of course, it's tied to MetaMask. Some people speculate about a big airdrop in the future to MetaMask users, of which we know that most people have used MetaMask. So it could be the better, the biggest and best uh, airdrop that's ever occurred for meme coin. So watch, this is launching, I think it might've launched, it might've launched. I think it was meant to be around 10 o'clock SAST, which is right now. Pups, the top meme coin on upcoming runes protocol. Keep an eye out on that. Puff, chapter one, airdrop on mantle. S goat leading community incubator on Phantom. This is a big one, right? I think goat and Foxy, those are the two to look out for. Um, here it is, right? So launching, there we go. 
launching today. There's all the details. It will be launching over here on OKX, Bybit, Gate.io, and Linux. So go and check it out. If you are looking for exposure here, it's giving you all the details. The starting price will be 0 0.30, 0005 per Foxy token, uh, the fully diluted valuations, $5 million market cap. Um, so have a look out for that. Uh, I think it is one to watch, which is launching today. Okay, uh, what else? What else do we have before we go into the other requests? There you have Bitcoin dominance attempting to push up again. Uh, hopefully this thing breaks out. I actually just wanted to break out. I'd love to see this move um, up into this top region over here. And then that's where we can bring up the Renko charts again and see are those altcoins capitulating up against Bitcoin. And this could be the area of interest, right? This $58 uh, dollar region, or sorry, 58% region could be the area where we can look to uh, pivot some of our Bitcoin into altcoins coins and then waiting for the ultimate break of that uh, rising wedge formation, uh, which we know is typically a bearish chart pattern. Whilst remember, it's not enough. We look at the order of sequence in terms of um, the, the priority list. Horizontals are the strongest. So if we come into the top of the horizontal whilst being in a bearish pattern, that will be uh, a double reason for me to consider shifting some of my Bitcoin into altcoins because then the next move is likely down. Even if it is going to be a high low, uh, this will be a pretty substantial little altcoin leg that you'll see coming back into the zone. So that's why we're watching over there. Um, Okay, let's go into a couple more of these things and then I'll take some requests. I know this show has actually been really, really long over here. Tuka continues to rip, guys. I told you, I told you, watch this coin. I told you guys, this thing is absolutely flying. Do not fade this. Uh, that's been the notice out, at least to the whale room community that got in all the way down here. They are now up uh, to the height. 90x, 90x return from bottom to top. Currently, as it stands, well, it's probably about a 70x return because they got in at an $800,000 market cap. Uh, I wouldn't fade this coin. I wouldn't fade this coin. Continue to hold. I know usually with meme coins, we sell incrementally. Maybe when you get to 50 million, then you get to 100 million, 150. I'm targeting way higher, way, way, way higher for, for Tuka, right? Um, Okay, which other ones are worth mentioning over here? Uh, we went into Pepe Coin, we went into Based AI. How's Roost doing? Roost, I do want to get some exposure on uh, Base. So let's have a look. I think that's a zone. That's a pretty solid zone at $44 million market cap. I'll watch this. I'll keep an eye out over the course of the weekend. Um, I would like to get a little bit of exposure over here on Roost. And I think this range low is probably the place to do it. Okay. Let's get some of those altcoin requests. Um, is there anything that you guys want to see? I see uh, some of you guys saying Pendle, things like that. Okay, Pendle. Uh, while we wait for those requests to come in, we'll do a couple of them. Guys, please, a big reminder, uh, take advantage for the gummy airdrop while you still can, right? While you still can take advantage for the gummy airdrop, download the Phantom Wallet so that you can be connected to the right source uh, because time is running out. The snapshot could happen today, could happen tomorrow, could happen on Monday. At any moment, the snapshot will take place. In order to qualify, you need to have, uh, well, you can buy it on the open market when it launches, but uh, the easiest way would be to have a Blowfin account. Therefore, uh, you'll qualify for an airdrop, deposit $100 into specifically the perpetual account. Minimum of $100 USDT, put in the perpetual account and they will airdrop you some of the token and then it will launch first on Blowfin and you can enter over there. And then also a big, big reminder with everything going on around Uniswap, you have very limited time before they're gonna subpoena them for all of that information. Get yourself a NordVPN and stay safe out there. Stay safe out there. All right, uh, altcoin requests. Okay, altcoin requests. Let's have a look over here. Um, Quickly going through the list, let's look at some of the coins that were strong against BTC. So there's stacks, okay, USD against stacks. Probably gonna be a buying zone somewhere around here. Um, I do expect that this trend will continue, right? This has been higher highs and higher lows. There you have it, a bit of an uptrend which is forming over here. Uh, it is threatening to break that level down, but at the end of the day, take it level to level, it is still an uptrend for stacks. Which other ones were strong over here? We had OM which looked very, very strong. And there you go, USD pair breaking out. Remember we said, watch this range high over here at 83 cents, watch for the breakout. Eventually we're looking for expansion all the way up to $1.55, looking very, very powerful. Okay, uh, Dusk wasn't too great yet. Okay, what other ones do we have? 
Um, all of the DEXs were getting smashed. Uh, AI, okay, let's look at some of the AI. We said that Fetch and uh, AGIX look good against Bitcoin. So we can look at these. Here's your range, right, for Fetch AI. This is your accumulation range or your reaccumulation range. Watch for this level to hold. As long as you don't get any closing candles there below $2.36, it should be okay. AGIX, also strong against Bitcoin. Same thing, right? Looks very, very similar uh, to Fetch AI creating that trading range. There it is. There's your trading range. You want to see uh, closing candles continuing to hold above 98 cents. If you start to close below 98 cents, there could be trouble. Um, okay, what else? We had, I uh, just saw over there, Pendle, right? We know Pendle's been one that's been doing super well. So let's look at Pendle. Okay, Pendle, Pendle, there we have it. Up only, right? One of these powerful coins, I know a lot of you might be waiting for a pullback, probably won't come with these types of coins. The way that you gain your exposure is you wait for a, a little bit of a trading range to form, something like that. I, we haven't got the trading range yet. It's too difficult to identify. This is just um, a little bit of a prediction that if you do get something like this, you're looking to buy the sweeps of those lows, right? Something like that. There you go. You're looking to get in anywhere around those lows, any sweeps of those lows, which will be uh, just below $6. That's the level to gain an entry. So when it comes to building your portfolios, guys, be very, very careful out there. Please make sure that the chart is in an uptrend if you're buying and holding for the long term. An uptrend against USD pairs, so uh, whatever the coin is, Pendle versus USD should be high highs and high lows. Pendle versus BTC should be high highs and high lows. That is a strong coin. That's a good coin. And the coins that have been performing well now against Bitcoin are probably the coins that are going to continue to outperform for the rest of this cycle. So that's it from me, folks. I'll see you all on the next one. Have an absolutely wonderful weekend. And for the rest of you, we'll catch you in Whale Room. And cheers for now.